The people of Kildalmich on Akil Island had a look into their historic past last week. The occasion was a pageant to celebrate the cleaning and the restoration of Kildownit graveyard. Named in honour of St. Downit, Dimpna, the cemetery had become, through years of neglect, impassable, overgrown with weeds and nettles. But Father Somerville inspired the youth with his own great enthusiasm, and with assistance from the youth employment scheme, they tackled the mammoth task. The pageant told the story of Downit herself and of her violent death in Faraway, Belgium, and of others buried in the graveyard, Father Michal and, of course, Antal Urgorum. But the sight of 32 youngsters, each carrying a cross inscribed with a name, brought home to those present the sheer magnitude of the drowning tragedy in 1894, when a small boat from Achill, with people on their way to board the emigrant ship for Scotland, capsized with the loss of 32 lives. They were buried in this mass grave in Kildownich, a headstone bearing their names, now newly cleaned. Another great tragedy many years later, in 1937, again with Scottish and emigrant connections, and indeed remembered by many of those present, was the Kirkintullock disaster, Ten people from this area, including three from one family, the Mangans, while in Scotland for the potato season, were burned to death in a Bothy fire in Kirkintullough. The prophecy made by Brian Rua about the railway to Achill would seem to have been true, that both the first and the last trains to use this line would carry coffins. Many years ago, before the bridge connecting the island to the mainland was built, funerals from Ancoron came across the bay, the boat bearing the coffin also flying a white flag. This was also reenacted in the pageant. Mikey Moro Galachur, who was now over 80, made this coffin, as he made so many others already in the cemetery. Oh, it must be nearly 20 years. They come around the road now by her trail, the one that's getting buried here. So today brought back old memories to you, Oh, buddy. indeed it did. We were well used to it before this. We took them over from halfway from here to my granny, three or four miles over. By road before this, and they carried them sticks under the coffins. They used to call them Maji Krohe. If you hear it in that anachron in the sand bringing them to the graveyard. Oh, I mean, they, there's monuments over there then. They called them yachtis, where they used to rest coming with the coffins that time. The monuments are still there. There was no road in it And no hearse, of course. No hearse. Only the hearse and cart came afterwards, and then the hearse did. Well, oh. you'll hardly make another coffin. Today oh, was the last. I'm finished. I'm thinking I'll be going in that one myself. <laughs> That's what I'll be. After benediction of the Holy Sacrament, as the Pollock pipe band played, the fishing boats came to anchor opposite the cemetery for the blessing ceremony. A priest on where? A priest. Then the boats moved away down the bay, and the people departed for home, pleased and proud to have been reminded again of so much that had happened to their own people. <laughs>